Good evening to everyone. Welcome to our second webinar. Today we have fantastic guests from Israel, Italy, and Serbia, Mikhail Mikhaeli, Franco Coin, and Dragana Virtus. Thank you so much for joining us. It's afternoon, it's after work time, but we're going to connect and discuss fantastic and important topic on how businesses and uh, institutions collaborated during the lockdown and what's the future between these two sectors. So I would kindly ask our participants, uh, our panelists, to introduce themselves. Um, and so we can start the discussion. So maybe, Mikhail, you would like to, to join us um, and, and to tell us something about yourself. Greetings to Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, greetings from Tel Aviv. Actually, here it's almost dark, um, um, a, a bit later than you. Um, so actually, I work for, I'm the director of the International Economic Development at Tel Aviv Global. Tel Aviv Global is a municipal body that is in charge of all the international scope of Tel Aviv. And actually, we're dealing with three main pillars. The tourism, addressing, first of all, it's one of the major economic engines of the city. But also, um, just, and I was saying, it, it, it's, it's interesting to see how it's going to change now post-crisis, but we were actually in a, in a path of really uh, giving a lot of thought of how not to let the tourism industry overwhelm some of the city's achievement or, you know, the not to get to a place like Barcelona or Amsterdam and dealing with then animosity between the residents and the tourists. And now I think we will miss that discussion for a while. And so tourism, which also includes, of course, uh, operating uh, some uh, information center for tourists in charge of the community tourism and other um, operations. And the international communication, we have over 500 international media bodies um, that are um, located in Tel Aviv and working from here. So we have an ongoing relationship with them supplying so with them with news, but also using them as part of our core um, strength here. And my, de my department, which is International Economic Development, which actually harness all of the Tel Aviv brand and the whole network and international um, connections that we have in favor of the international economic um, community, that of the local economic community. And it was mostly we are focusing on the high tech industry since the innovation ecosystem is a main strength and leading industry. So this is the most that uh, uh, the activities that we're doing with this ecosystem. And I'll just, I don't know how many of you really know Tel Aviv, but actually we're in, physically we're quite small. Tel Aviv is only 52 square kilometers in uh, size and we have less than half a million of, in population. Uh, and although this is actually only what we have in that sense, we have over 2,100 startups in the city right now, um, and over 107 uh, multinational companies like Google and Microsoft and Intel and Visa and others that made Tel Aviv their home and opened their R&D and innovation lab. R&D centers and innovation. And another very thriving sector we have is the scale-up companies. Those startups that grew, that now some of them are already traded on the leading stock exchanges, have exited or IPO'd and are employing thousands, hundreds, two thousand of people. So we are trying to address each of those sectors to its need and actually have this communication in a, ongoing discussion with them to identify those needs and to see how the municipality can cater to that on one hand. And on the other hand, bring all those capabilities and um, advantages of the high-tech ecosystem into the city itself, either to the municipality, but also to the residents and the other different neighborhoods by having uh, municipal um, entrepreneurial centers and by doing all kinds of programs and training to the residents. So um, I think that's enough for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dragana, um, as a representative of, of sector in Serbia, how would you 
Oh, Hi, good evening. Okay, I'm Dragana Becic, working with the Office for IT and the Government, Government of the Republic of Serbia. Office for IT and the Government is a small government body. Uh, it was established before only two years, and our goal is uh, Oh, we, are, we are in charge for a government uh, network developing uh, and also supporting uh, various IT solutions, government services, uh, but also developing uh, e-government services to citizens, to businesses. Portal of e-government uh, is um, our product, like, to say it like, like that. So we are trying to digitalize Serbia and to digitalize public administration. So that is for me. Thank you. Franco, what about you? Okay, Franco Corina. Uh, I'm living in Padua, so I'm not so far from Belgrade, a little bit more from Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm living in Padua, in Italy, that's in Italy, and uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been uh, working for 30 years in the IT, IT sector, and I'm still working in it. I founded the company and uh, I settled a, a, um, an affiliate in Belgrade that is growing up very fast now and is doing very well. You know it as is a, it's called Engineering Balkan, maybe somebody knows about it. And um, then uh, I left the company because uh, at the end uh, I sold it. And now I'm working as a, let me say something like a digital, a digital angel and something like a consultant. Um, actually, I'm really involved in some engineering activities. Uh, so I'm working on the smart cities and that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm also a member of uh, some uh, international um, organization one of them is the, the one of them, probably is closer to the, the discussion we're going to have today. I'm in, uh, in the steering committee of the regulatory group of uh, regulatory room of uh, Building Smart International. It is the world uh, standard organization that is settling the standards for um, information technology used for assets. That means building infrastructure and so on. I can stop here if I think, otherwise I can't. I, I start boring you, I think. <laughs> and a uh, question for Dragan and Mikhail, how did collaboration between IT sector and, uh, let's say, business uh, evolve during the pandemic? What were some, let's say, three more, most striking things you noticed in ecosystem of Serbia and Israel? Whoever wants to start first. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? I, I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Yes, yes. So uh, how, how did during the pandemic, during the lockdown, the collaboration between business sector and institutions, your institution namely, evolve? So let's say if you can list three things that were most inspiring for you and something which was throw you off back, like, oh my God, this is really amazing. It took us a while to, to do that. I have maybe 100 things to list. <laughs> okay, I can go first. Like, I think that, okay, definitely collaboration between IT sector and public authorities in Serbia during the coronavirus pandemic and lockdown uh, has been excellent. Uh, maybe one of the best example of that successful collaboration is definitely Portal Digital Solidarity. Uh, we very quickly published uh, that website, Digital Solidarity, for all those people who are staying at home due to coronavirus pandemic. The idea was uh, to publish in one place all information about free, free platforms for distance learning, working from home, um, educational um, things like curse, uh, courses, uh, free books, music, film, uh, Etc. Uh, uh, about more than 100 companies published um, 
from there and gave those uh, their solution and content com completely for free. And there have been about 80,000 visits to that website and citizens being most interested in platforms from working from home. I think that that was something new for lots of people, but also uh, theater plays, uh, plays were very, <laughs> very, uh, people watch them quite, yeah, so. Yeah. I think that digital solidarity and that web portal, we also saw that Italy had uh, something similar, Slovenia had something similar, so it was like a global um, movement of digital solidarity. Thank you. What about Mikkel? What, what would you say? Uh, yes, these questions? are all great. Mm -hmm. Sorry? When it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to functioning of the city, and collaboration between business and, and authorities, your office, I think, mainly. I think as usual in crisis, it's even in a way easier to get this cooperation and collaboration. Everybody moves aside other issues that they have and join the joint effort in a way. So we had a few things. First of all, we also tried to bring other cities to be part of it and did a hackathon and tried to find all kinds of solutions for different challenges that we arose. The city actually posed three challenges. One was to support businesses that were closed during the lockdown. One was actually how to get to some of the most vulnerable uh, population that need more help or assistance. And the third one uh, was how actually to identify or even try to help bring the order to the street when they were just starting the lockdown. People didn't really understand in the beginning what is expected. And they were amazing. We had like a 48 hours, crazy 48 hours with uh, 38 teams from five countries, mostly Israelis but still, and even one from Australia. And uh, at the end, uh, we had out of them, I think 25 issued uh, some ideas. And of course, in each category, we had a winner that even at least one of those implementation was implemented in the still in the um, uh, time of the lockdown. For example, uh, there was a platform that actually um, connect with volunteers, residents or people who want to volunteer and help the city, and actually gives the municipality a very good platform and tool to manage all of the activities that we had to do anyway like food delivery or um, assisting elderly people or even spreading news to specific more close communities like asylum seekers. So actually this uh, platform, and I know those entrepreneurs, they were working on it before, but it actually gave them a push to finish some of their, um, some of the aspects of the product and to um, bring it out so we could use it just after the hackathon and it was used, I think it's still easy uh, to connect those volunteers and the municipality effort. Um, another thing that I can uh, talk about is the fact that we actually uh, turned, when it was all the e-learning and the distance learning, we found out that there are family needs that doesn't have enough computers for children. So actually we, uh, gave a shout out to the whole community, to companies, um, and asked them to donate or lend us the computer that they're not using at the time. And there was an amazing uh, response, and we had 700 computers um, donated to children around the city that needed it, which also is something that usually, you know, the municipality doesn't want to ask, but that was um, also very, very helpful. As I said, there's so many as examples. Absolutely, but. yeah, yeah. And, and for, for the aim of this discussion is actually to, to remember just something that was maybe the most, uh, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind, but it also can be applicable in other communities. Uh, with us, we have um, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Israel in Serbia. We, we send regards now. And also the embassy team is, is watching uh, uh, our, our talk. Oh, wow. so I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad, and I'm thankful on behalf of, of our, our organization for, for the staunchest support we have from, from the embassy, in bringing experts wow. and in 
Oh, so far, we worked uh, in the capacity of, of bringing people to Serbia, but even in new circumstances, of course, through, through online exchange, we can, we can do that. Um, and I would like to, to ask uh, Franco and Dragana about, uh, maybe Franco could start uh, and share the, the business perspective, giving, it, giving us the, the insights about Petova community, which was actually the city of, uh, of volunteers. He can explain why it happened. And the second thing, why, uh, how, how it worked for your business. You work with authorities, you work with other, other business clients. So how did you adapt uh, in Italy, which was quite, quite challenging, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, thank you. Okay, I, I told you that Padua is the was named the European capital of volunteering in 2020, and no place was more fitted to for this uh, because we were being the first city in uh, in Italy to have a person died for uh, a death for for the virus, and we also had uh, the first hotspot in Europe but has been segregated. That is the village of Euganeo. And this has been an example for many cities on how to segregate a small part of the, of the, of, of, of the country and to, to make it, uh, to create a total lockdown in that area. Uh, okay, in terms of collaboration and solidarity, of course, as Michael said, of course, when you have something that is going wrong, uh, People, everyone want to help and uh, um, industries and companies were the first to help. Uh, not only the IT companies, but by, by chance, IT companies have been very involved in, not only because they were involved in some, uh, uh, create, in creating networks between volunteers and helping the people to work, but as, as, we, as you said, we send, uh, we, we bought and uh, give a lot of uh, computers and devices uh, to students because uh, we have a uh, very little, we have a lot of needy students that need for, um, uh, for tools for, to connect for, to the school. But also we have some uh, strong physical involvement in the IT companies because volunteers are, are requested to be young in uh, at the beginning especially when the virus was hitting very hot, very strong in uh, in the first part of march and so a lot of people were stopping to to work uh, as a uh, as uh, as <laughs> with a computer and was going out wearing a mask to help the volunteers in doing what is was needed what was so principally uh, uh, support the old, the older people because we have a, the big problem in Italy we had was a, we had a very bad situation for the elders. And <clears throat> then uh, we have, okay, just to tell you a story, but one of the things that can be, uh, in, you know, quite, quite funny about the solidarity is that all our grappa companies, the distillers that were making grappa, start making uh, <clears throat> gel, uh, sanitizing gels for the, for the people. So with the same bottles. So <laughs> you can, please don't drink it <laughs> with a great label written over is saying no, do not drink, please. Just for uh, for the for the virus. So we're gonna drink in the later on it to to toast when we, everything is done. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, what how these things uh, was hitting the company, honestly, I have to say that uh, the market for uh, the, the, the ICT market is, it has been hitting, it has been uh, slammed a little bit by, the, by the, the, the virus, but nothing compared to the other company, to the other business. Tourists or, uh, I don't know, uh, tourism or also um, retail and so on have been uh, slammed very, very strongly and they are really, really facing big troubles in, uh, in the start. Uh, because we are now in a condition to a start in Italy, even if uh, the, the, the pandemic is not uh, everything but, but, but that finished. 
And in my person, I mean, the company I'm working in, that is DBA Group, that is an engineering company, honestly, we have been able to work, uh, to, to be active. 85% of the people was working the day after the lockdown. So honestly, no problem. Of course, the business is not doing so well, uh, but we see also a lot of requirements, new requirements coming from the pandemic, or better, from this situation, this global situation, that is, uh, by chance, uh, using uh, in the construction uh, more devices for security and social distance and body, uh, personal distancing. And so, honestly, we are not been we have been the lucky ones the ict companies has been the lucky ones in this situation and um, but of course uh, in the restart uh, i i'm not sure what because said uh, what you said that everything come back at the same because people changed a lot of uses and the 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 the, 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 the risk of a second wave is very high so I think that we can have some kind of waves that can drive us to a new normality. And what we have to ask for in our, in our business, in our relation with, the, with the, 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 the institutions, is to help us to go fast in the changes that are related to this new, this new normality because new normality will ask for a new way of doing something, new way of paying taxes, new way of... Uh, I wanna say that we know that uh, till now IT has been for, uh, in, if, you talk, if you talk about the, the public sector, like if you were in a car and you have only the windshield in front of you and the IT is used to take a look of what happens in the uh, public process, we need that the IT will become the full car. And we need to process all the stuff we can do with the uh, public, uh, in the, with, the, with, the, with the institutions through, the, through digital. It's not something that we can do tomorrow, but it's something where it's, it's a direction we have to go to. I think so, <laughs> of course. Um, this is my Dragana, great, great. Thank you so much. Dragana, do you think that um digital solidarity would become a new standard like after this philanthropy and community health will be perceived differently um we may raise the bar what what is expected from business sector uh, well i think that every kind of solidarity is our golden key to the future of mankind digital solidarity is just one example of solidarity for example, um, during the state of the emergency in Serbia, we could all see various companies offering help to small businesses, medium businesses, uh, citizens, individuals, but also to the government. Uh, I know that only Office for IT and the government received lots of mails, emails from our citizens living here, living ab abroad, uh, where they're offering um, to office and to government of Serbia help their platforms and we are very grateful uh, for that uh, we uh, I can't I, I will probably something forget to mention but uh, companies that would, uh, were donating uh, mobile phones and ta tablets to the students that had uh, the test um, for eighth graders uh, during the lockdown um, then uh, mobile operators that didn't uh, charge for mobile data if you are watching uh, uh, online uh, and you're doing online uh, schooling from home so we have like a lots of uh, examples of great solidarity from companies in Serbia and I think that in every country some things change uh, in people and i think in definitely this uh, coronavirus changes in our mindset completely and i really hope that that will stay and it will learn us to be a better thanks a lot yeah, yeah. It's, it's great examples of of how, how the future can also continue to be uh Mikhail, if you can share with us your perspective like working in tel aviv environment 
uh, what did you notice uh, changing in sense of philanthropy? Um, and maybe it's about the mindset of people. We know people from Israel um, are very, very open-minded and um, vibrant uh, and expressive. So how, how did this community spirit continue to, to thrive? And was it motivating you and your colleagues in your daily work, which was, I, I would imagine, extremely stressful to run everything properly? Yes. Well, actually, um, there was a debate here if it's the, the general Israeli public was very um, organized and very in line with the instruction in the beginning of the pandemic, which on one hand, we're kind of used to all, all kind of stress situation and all kind of, you know, wars or even just, um, so on one hand, it was part of that probably. On the other hand, I think the government showed from the beginning a very strong uh, position and well established, which actually, so everybody in, just fell in line and really kept most of the, of the restriction in the beginning was talked about. And as you said, there was a lot of cases that you can see people helping others and uh, neighbors helping their elderly. A lot, a lot of requests that we received of young people that didn't go, of course, to school and were quite bored and wanted to help. And really, they, many of the youngsters, maybe uh, many of the youth came to those, for example, all the food distribution efforts or others. And that was very hard for me. Uh, but as you said, the open-minded and the free-spirited, lately when the restriction were starting to be pulled off and they wanted it to be gradually, it didn't really help because then um, people, you know, when thing became a bit more obscure, just went on and pushed the envelope. Uh, and again, as you said, we're still very afraid from the second wave. So Israel is very fortunate. We had less than 17,000 cases of the, of the pandemic and we have 260 fatalities, which is very, very low as, uh, for, uh, um, so we're very fortunate in that way. And we are, when we want, nobody really knows exactly how, uh, why, but one of the reasons it's the population here is younger than most of Europe, for example. The other is that we are kind of, kind of closed off. We have one entrance to a one airport, so it was easier to close when they decided to do a major lockdown. So, um, and, and it was quite soon in the beginning that the government decided on a very severe lockdown and then everybody pulled in. Um, so we are hoping that, and maybe the weather also is helping the warm um, whether it's helping the virus leave us, hopefully. Uh, but as Dragna says, I'm, maybe I'm more of a cynic, but I hope that we can actually find a way to um, keep all this goodwill and all this, um, you know, uh, uh, volunteering even further and not that, and I'm, I'm more of a worried that people will return to their old habits once things are back, back to normal. But I hope we will find a way to do it. When we speak about new normal, it, it seems that we kind of want to cling to something, to get back to something which, which was the world we knew before and something good about that world. But the change is actually irreversible. So uh, also, as all of you said, and thank you, Michael, for, for sharing perspective with Israel, um, the lockdown brought us, brought something new and nice and brilliant in all of us. Uh, so that that may also become a new normal in a way, like how we how we do business and how we how we treat each other across industries, across markets. So I think that's one of the most fascinating victories of humanity. Uh, Franco can tell us um, about his experience with the Truvian man. Um, there was a lovely anecdote as we were sharing and as we were preparing for them for the for the webinar and also i would like to address to all of you the question like can we now given on your on your experience over the last several months can we now identify 
the most important technologies on our journey to more resilient and healthy, healthy communities. So if you can think of several technologies that you saw that were important in, in good operation of the cities uh, during the last, last several weeks and which are becoming the standard for us. Frank, maybe you can start. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yes, I'm okay. Uh, I'm very, uh, even if I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a chemist, I'm not an engineer, I'm working on technology if, since uh, the beginning. I am very, uh, I, I like very much philosophy. And sometimes if somebody asks me why, and I say because uh, many times uh, uh, digital information, digital evolution, looks uh, is very close to something as a lot of philosophical entanglements and uh, relations so that many times i think that the digital looks uh, the arm of a philosophical theor theory and i because of this i was thinking to some uh, I, you know vitruvian mean is my <laughs> is uh, the man that made leonardo and put the man in, in the center of uh, the of everything including of the world, including the technology. And uh, so what I think is that in this moment, digital technology is, uh, is, 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 has to change, has to be considered differently from a philosophical point of view and then from a political point of view and then from a business point of view and then from like social point of view. Because uh, we have been uh, for a long time using economic metrics for uh, I, for technology for digital technology that are the same that we use for bicycles or for bricks that are not exactly the same, and we have to change. So if we if I think to digital solidarity, I think that is something that is changing. That is something different. Is a part of the new way we have to consider technology. And digital technology in our life. I, I'm, a, I'm an activist in the European Parliament and I'm asking them for a data mines tax. That means this, uh, you know, all the digitals are using uh, uh, people knowledge. People know this come uh, from education. Digital companies should pay something to support education more. Because I think that uh, if people is, uh, is the center, digital can use the people, can uh, be used, uh, digital can make money with the people if people, if it helps to educate people to use uh, their, 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 their tools. In terms of technologies, uh, the best technologies, of course, the first one is connectivity and cloud. Uh, it looks stupid to talk about this because uh, we give this for done but if you start thinking that uh, what this coronavirus showed us is that there are a lot of it, what we call the internal territories the mountain villages the little islands the place uh, what lost is close to the river that have no access to a uh, good uh, connectivity not enough to do the smart something smart working smart Smart, smart school, smart everything. The second things I, I technology. The second thing that the digital technology has to work on is in the interoperability. This is a really something very important. I just want to tell you the story of Veneto, the reason where I am. Uh, we have we had the, the same numbers of uh, uh, people uh, that was infected at the beginning, like Lombardy, that is Milano, that is famous because they have very, very bad situation. But we have been able to stop the, situ the, 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 info the, the pandemic here because we have two tools. One was the capability of make swaps, a lot of swaps. And the second one, because we have an interoperable system that was able to know uh, when somebody was uh, um, infected, to connect it to his family, to his work, uh, to the employees that were working with him, and so on, without any tracing uh, up, we have not not tracing up. But interoperability was something that was coming from uh, uh, 
from a, a decision that was taken some year, a couple of years ago and make this uh, it was very 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 helpful in the in the pandemic so interoperability the capability of different systems to work together is the is, is the key the other one is the we call i call it the dressed blockchain that is the technology that allows us to use digital to do things not only to be informed of it and uh, this is something that is uh, uh, would like to announce if you apply this to public sector especially you don't you're not going to announce work productivity but you're going to announce life productivity the, the citizens life productivity they will spend less time in doing best things and having more time to be for education and for smart things i will i think it's enough <laughs> fantastic i would like ragana to add on um, what, what you noticed in, in collaboration with, with Serbian companies, what technologies are becoming important now? Well, I will say from the point of public um, mm -hmm. government and public authorities, uh, and also uh, someone who were working in commu uh, communication, uh, during the time of crisis, it is vital for governments to provide accurate, uh, useful and up-to-date information. Uh, and not to, to have fake news and also um, that are coming in crisis and spreads very quickly. Uh, it's very important also to uh, the quality of support. For example, in Serbia, now we had uh, like online enrollment of kids in preschools, uh, in kindergartens. We had like um, lots of parents that were calling us. They had problems like uh, what to do, how to do this. We needed to provide the quality support uh, and also those information that are useful and up to date. On the topic of re, uh, information, I must mention uh, the open data and how important it is uh, for one government to have like open data and to publish daily data sets on infected persons. Uh, so we were publishing and we are still publishing daily data sets on infected persons by munip municipalities in Serbia. The number of persons who are in uh, man mandatory self-isolation, the number of hospitalized, uh, tested, deceased, the number of per persons uh, that are on the respirator and as well as the number of cured. Information are also available about COVID-19 ambulances, uh, their working hours, um, contact, etc. Um, I think that uh, we all were hearing about, oh, we need to flatten the curve, like we need to have like a flatten the curve. For example, to my grandmother, flatten the curve doesn't mean anything. She can't read the uh, data sets that are mach machine readable. So we provided also one uh, portal with visualization for like uh, common people, uh, common citizens that where they could see like all the statistics and all data very simplified um, for them to under understand. Also, we had uh, like a great um, collaboration with community of open data uh, and those data sets um, they could integrate it into their visualization and application and I think that that trust that is built through this cooperation between uh, institution and citizens communities now community of open data is very important we need we have uh, also great community with uh, a great re relationship with the communities but i think that after this it will be even better and you, you actually told us like how, how how it should work work really function in, in reality so yeah and governments in being in the service of, of common people not everybody who is digitally savvy. Yeah, we must know that my grandma doesn't know how to use those portals. So yeah, we need to have like simplified solutions for elder people to use. Thank you. And Nicole, what, what did you notice uh, as, as important technologies? Um, I found a lot of the similarity with what they said. Uh, one thing that I wrote even before, but I completely sympathize sympathizes the open data. And as you said, it's part of the transparency with your residents or citizens and 
the ability to really just put it uh, at their service for them to use either if it's in technology companies or just the population itself. Uh, and it's very, very important. But also, as you said, it's important. One of the things that we did, the mayor, I think all through at least the three weeks, had a daily video addressing the people of the city and explaining. And as you said, every day there was one focal point talking about what's happening in, uh, I don't know, if there, with the restriction or one of the services the city is offering. But the fact that they had six days a week, a video from the mayor explaining, talking, it had thousands of views and people were reacting to it very, very warmly. And we found that it was very important to them. To those who have the general um, government, you still have someone which is a figure which is very loved and adored, but he's also talking and explaining things um, directly in, um, in your level. And, and another issue that I think that you didn't really talk about in is one of our strengths and something that is very talked about here is the mobility technologies. Because this is one of the areas that is changing and the pandemic and this crisis is changing rapidly. And we see companies that really took this crisis as a, their stepping stone uh, to, to implement those, but the mobility field will change and it is changing, but it will even change differently now. And this is part of the um, technologies that I'm sure we get a boost. Yeah, just as ed tech, which nobody really wanted to talk about until a few months ago, is now coming back to the center of stage and getting uh, so many, much attention and advancing. Mm -hmm. So these things as well. Thanks a lot. And as, a, as an end user and somebody working in the digital world, I would say for me and, and some people in my community, uh, e-commerce became a big thing because you realize, okay, you use technology already, but until it reaches your door, to so actually the last person in this supply chain to help you and deliver things to your field, there should be more, more improvements in that area. And apart from that, work from home, remote work, something that is becoming a new standard at the end, especially because companies, not all companies feel comfortable with uh, having all employees in one office. We need to redesign our offices and, and how we do our work. Um, I would like to start with you, Mikkel, on telling us uh, what you heard, you and your colleagues heard from from businesses, uh, companies that, that are uh, that are reaching out and what infrastructural, financial, and business challenges they had uh, and where, where you as, as, a, as an institution could help them. And then Dragana can tell us the needs of companies that you noticed um, that were pressing. So of course, uh, different industries were hit differently and reacted differently, but across the board, everybody of course were in difficulties and some extent. So the municipality as a rule gave whatever assistance it could um, to all the businesses in the city. Um, as they, they gave a three months exemption from the city taxes from all kinds of, there are a few kinds for restaurants and hotels and whatever. Each one had their um, specific uh, taxes or uh, payments um, reduced and then exempt uh, for the whole period until the end of May at least. Uh, and actually many of them were, I think, mostly showed um, the difficulties with adapting to the new reality, as you said. Many of the restaurants, for example, used the online um, sh uh, shipment uh, services but not all could adapt to it and not so, no, so soon uh, as the crisis uh, actually demanded uh, from them. And many of the, all the brick and mortar businesses that are, were shut down and, didn't, and couldn't really start developing them. This is some of the things that we're trying to help those businesses now when we're going back to business on how to bridge that gap and to bring them to the digital age even for the smaller ones and the less uh, obvious ones. But even for the high-tech industry, um, the, the fact that they were cut off 
from their customers, from their investors, from the whole community. Because as I said, we're a bit far off here in Israel and we're not, not in Europe or the States where all the work is actually. So on one hand, there were, nobody had, you know, no flights, no events, no um, conferences. But on the other hand, for some of them, the demand to work with the customer from uh, remote bigger and they had to also to react to that. So we were trying to help a lot, for example, some of the startup to connect them to their customers or potential customers when there aren't any conventions and events. But they, it was, it required different answer to different sectors, actually, and a lot of uh, flexibility that you have and a lot of ingenuity to come up with ideas. Just for example, just answering the need when they did lift some of the restrictions and they said you can go to hairdressers, so the municipality allowed them to work outside on the pavement even, just to have bigger um, area to work in and um, op option to work outside in the open. So, which is used, wasn't heard of before, of course. So that's just an example. Thank you, thank you. A lot of matchmaking happening, a lot of specific questions, uh, which require also your bandwidth and, and some, some amount of time. Dragon, what would you say? Um, what were typical questions of businesses in Serbia? Well, I think that IT companies did not feel uh, the great uh, impact of pandemic, at least for now. And I uh, really hope it will remain so. Uh, definitely those companies uh, are quite used to working um, online, working from house, uh, house working um, quite dynamic. And uh, I think that the pandemic um, definitely changed uh, some other small businesses, uh, forced them to think uh, about that digital transformation. You know, we talk about it a lot, like, oh, we need to have like digital transformation. Nobody knows what it means. And I think that um, definitely this pandemic, with this lockdown that we had, uh, just pushed a bit uh, those companies that they were making like decision to go online, to be offline, to be digital, to be analog, to go digital, because it was the only way to survive these few months. Um, definitely, um, we monitor uh, the market, we monitor the cash flow, and based on the market, we will decide on the steps uh, in the field of ICT companies. Certainly other affected sectors have already received uh, state aid or, or are in process of receiving it. So um, it was, I think, quite challenging. Um, maybe it was a, a bit push that somebody needed to change uh, way of thinking and way of working. It's maybe too early to talk about that, but the, uh, the independence test, so to speak, test some honesty, may be one of the things that will help 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 companies. But let's see, this is something that can be discussed in the future. Uh, yeah, Franco, what happened with, with businesses like Debi Lab and or uh, some other executives and businesses you work with? where they needed help from, from the government and, and other institutional partners? So the first thing I have to say is that uh, if uh, ICT industry was the lucky one in Italy, uh, for the virus, we've been hitting maybe stronger than any other nation in, uh, in Europe, because uh, the um, economically speaking, the, the virus uh, diffused especially in the most industrial uh, regions of Italy, so in Veneto, Lombardia and uh, Piemonte, that are making more or less 70% uh, of our GDP. So actually the economic uh, aspect of the crisis in Italy is really, really scary. Um, financial requirements are very high because, of course, uh, you have a uh, lot of people, but a lot of companies that have been closing. 
And because of this, we are looking for a, a risky balancing between uh, the virus and the reopening. So this is the situation in this moment that is uh, everything but, uh, uh, let me say, safe. But we are opening Veneto, Lombardia and Piemonte because otherwise the economic uh, impact will be devastating. So this is, uh, for, in terms of uh, what the government can do for us, what are the, uh, the, 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 the institution can do for us is, of course, uh, we're asking for a lot of, uh, I'm not talking about the IT sector, of course, but we are asking for a lot of financial uh, helps. And uh, unfortunately, we are also a very, uh, our, our public debit is very high. So in this moment, the, the, the two solutions we have uh, are, no, we have one, just one solution actually, that is uh, to count and to lean on Europe and Europe financing to be able to, so, to overwhelm this, the, 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 the the moment that we are living because for sure we have also that uh, uh, adding to this we have also that the touristic income of this year will be very bad it's not the our main uh, business but in this moment it should have been helped a lot to have uh, the touristic income for uh, for the nation uh, according to this, uh, we have a long discussion between the, our government and Europe about how to have money, not to have money. In the beginning, you know, the story has been quite, a dram quite dramatic because uh, there was uh, the German people saying something, the Italian people saying something else. Now things are working better, a lot better. And uh, the problem is that uh, the, the, and the money is coming. And the most important thing is how we can execute the financial, the financing of the companies, of the right companies in the right moment. Because uh, of course, as you said, many, many different requirements. We have uh, retails, retailers are, we have uh, retailers are very, very angry about what's going on are very tired of, uh, of not having any money. But on the other side, they are also the most dangerous part of, of the business. And so we have a very, very narrow road we can go through to get off. And so we have to use all the uh, resources we can use. And but the most important is the brain, is our mind. We have yeah. to be very, very, very clever in a very intelligent in uh, in save our life in this in this moment in Italy. Oh, okay. Of course, uh, this is what my the, the other the people tell tell me the the, the other entrepreneurs tell me. But uh, honestly, I think that uh, in this moment we can with the the help of uh, Europe and, the, and our government. And especially from the, 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 the help from the local um, local administration, because uh, it's stupid, by example, for in a, in a region like it in, in Italy, to have the same rules and the same financial situations for Lombardy or uh, Puglia or uh, I don't know Calabria that are in the south and they are living very, they have very little little contamination, they have little very little infection. So we have to balance a lot of stuff, geography, industry, and also the market, because the Germans are rising up. And so our industries have to deliver to Germans. Uh, so this is the way we are managing this very narrow way of, 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 going, uh, around, of going around for in the future, at least for a couple of years, I think. This is my perception of, uh, of recovery times. Contribution, I would say, and something that you, you brought perspective that in other markets we can definitely use. What are the key factors to pay attention to? I would like to ask you an ultimate question and then the ladies can, can also add the, their opinion. How will smart and healthy cities of the future look like? 
maybe you can share us the perspective from DBF lab group, what you guys are doing when it comes to construction engineering, what are IT security issues we need to bear in mind? Oh, that's, that's, so, that's a very huge question. Okay. okay. Let's keep um, yeah. Also because we have to you say know, one thing that uh, the, COVID, the virus is clearing up something that is, uh, is uh, clearing that uh, there is not only cities in the future. There will be territories, there will be uh, systems of residen residential sites, there will be metropolitan regions that are work will be working together. Because in terms, uh, as soon as we have been uh, started to work uh, on smart cities, immediately we understood that, especially for uh, smart cities works on very smart infrastructure and smart infrastructure are changing very fast and are connected different points. Uh, because of this, you cannot talk about a smart city, but you have to talk about a smart territory. And this change is changing a lot of stuff in our in, our, in the approach we have for 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 the cities of the future. That will be a place where you have to to work on sustainability or healthcare management in a having a wider view of what is happening. You cannot have all the hospitals in a single city because the people if people get uh, uh, get infected in Voyogano, that is a small village in the in the north, in the in the middle of the mountains. You have to block that 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 area, not not a, not the city. And uh, over another thing that is changing is uh, we have a lot of things that are stuff stuff that are collapsing together. Uh, if you think to a self-driving car that is driving on the road and you think that it's going to have an accident and uh, you have to know how are constr the construction are beside uh, to the road because when the car have to turn to not to kill a baby that is passing the road he has to decide to crash you on the wall or on a thin uh, garage door and this means save the people that is inside the car so the questions that are coming from the new uh, technologies that are fa we are facing are requiring us to have a very very wide view of the data that are around everything in the city and you have also to consider that this should be safe and cyber secure you cannot have a <laughs> you have to defend yourself from cyber crime so that door is has to be closed because you know that it's closed but not that the thief has to know that it's closed or it has to be broken by, by the car. So uh, at the moment, uh, we, what we are seeing is that uh, there is a, a very fast, the, the process is very fast actually, and the city of the future will be the, car, will be the cities that can manage the car of the future and then can manage the rivers of the future that have, could be sustainable that can manage the, 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 the railways of the future. So all to, everything is, is uh, collapsing in a single system. Open data, as you say, the, are, are the key, is the key for this. But also the execution and the activity you can do in, on open data, that is interoperability, is the other key. Because having data, but not having the way the data talk each other is, uh, is, 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 is something that you have to solve. Oh, just to say, tell you an example of what is going on in somewhere. Uh, Finland is doing, uh, is approaching very fast to this process. And actually, what they're doing is that uh, mixing together the GIS information that are related to the environment, so the environmental positioning of, uh, of, 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 of your house, and the BIM, that is uh, Building Information Management of your building, they make you pay more or less taxes because of uh, your uh, to foster real sustainability of the buildings. And uh, they are also trying to <laughs> avoid the, the greenwashing tricks. So people that say, is, okay, uh, I have changed my windows and so I pay less taxes. And they are checking that every time. That's very interesting. That's, that's, it, looks, it looks great. It looks great. 
Thank you. This, this is quite elaborate, but I believe useful examples for, for other communities, um, something that other cities can apply. Dragana, maybe you would like to add um, the perspective on smart cities of the future, bearing in mind your field and maybe social security of people, social services they wanted to use during lockdown, what they would like to use in the future. Uh, well, smart city is a wonderful concept. Uh, we talk about it a lot. I don't think that there is not any conference or any panel without even one topic about smart city. But I'm uh, afraid that only a little group of people really understand what is it. I mean, uh, uh, I think that we need to bring uh, this concept uh, uh, down to common man. Uh, that uh, he needs to understand what is the concept of smart city and how he can live smarter. Uh, for example, I work eight hours per day, even more. I'm losing few hours in traffic. I'm staying like only a few hours with my family. I want everything to put on the minimum, my um, going to the post bank and everything. I don't want to lose my daily hours to that. I want to be with my family. And definitely, I think that the next period, uh, we should definitely focus on uh, connecting the strategies of the cities and the companies with the, that offer smart solution uh, because everything, yeah, because we will have at the end some individual and isolated initiative if we, did, if we, we don't combine those two. Um, uh, and also, uh, for example, in Belgrade, we have like a uh, lot of uh, in the, uh, individual solution, but we need to integrate them into the big system that could provide us with the better data and database decision making. Uh, so definitely, okay, uh, coronavirus taught us that we really need to think about uh, smart healthcare, um, how to uh, smart organize healthcare in the future, but also to uh, daily routine of our citizens to make them simple, to don't lose hours waiting uh, in the lines to counter banks and everything. To So yeah, we... So. Uh, now, now, fantastic. And now you mentioned actually uh, unifying initiatives. You, you have a good track record because we made it with digital solidarity on the website of, 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 of your, your institution. So let's keep this momentum for, for the new reasons and for the, with the new objectives. Yeah. Nicole, I would like to hear from you how, how smart cities affect technology and urban planning. And what is your city and your office of Tel Aviv Global doing with all the communities around? Yeah. Yeah, as, uh, just uh, as was mentioned, the whole concept of the smart city is something that is changing all the time. And I'm sure that now it's not the same that we were talking about a few years back. And at least in our perspective is having a broader view of all the aspects and all the urban challenges that every resident is facing in the different life cycle of, of a resident since young families with kids all, all the way to the elderly. And exactly how we as a local government is meeting every one of those needs and coming up with the right solution uh, to meet it. But some of the things that I want to refer to that you asked before is about the future cities is the fact that I think one of the things that this crisis brought is looking closer to your immediate surrounding. At least here, we talked a lot about the fact that now people started to appreciate their immediate surrounding. If they have a small garden uh, in their home, they have terraces or balconies that they can go outside or rooftops. Sudden, suddenly the rooftops, having a rooftop that you can go uh, up, even if it's just, you know, the basic one that have all the infrastructure, people are very crazy about that as well. So I think this is one of the thing, if we're going to live in bigger metropolitan areas, if it's going to be more and more and more crowded because there aren't really any other solutions, we must have it greener and with more um, solution for the really immediate surrounding. 
We were measuring what we have in our 100 meters when they were allowing us to go outside in the beginning and then they 500 meters. And lucky me, I'm only five, less than 500 meters from the sea, from the beach. So I was very happy with that. But really, it really reflects people before that wanted big parks and attractions that are in a way outside of the city or on its outskirts. But now we understand even more how important it is to have those green islands and all these places that you can have also community life, but also just for recreation. So this is something that will have, I don't really know how, but should get a priority in creating. And I know the city planning here is working on that. Um, actually, one of the things that this mayor is doing in the, I think the last 10 years, even is creating is helping the city become more and more walkable. Because they say, we are not, we don't have any problem with the terrain, we, we don't have any altitude uh, problems, for example. And this is something that is much, much more now encouraged to walk and to use the bicycles and of course all these non-pollution and uh, much uh, greener technologies, uh, but also really just walk and be outside. And luckily we also have the weather to support it most of the year. So this is also something that must be part of all planning ahead to keep and enforce. Thank you. Um, final question. Um... I really like the part about the gardens and, and rooftops. This is something I crave in my area. And you can tell the tourism within the country, everybody goes to the weekends to, to the uh, mountain or to a neighboring camping site or someplace where there's nature. And, and yeah, uh, we, we crave that. Final question, Mikkel, maybe you can start. Um, tell us what are the new stakeholders uh, or maybe old old stakeholders that you as Tel Aviv office worked before, but are now becoming important to build a partnership between authorities and business. The role of millennials and Generation Z, the role of women in business. You can also tell us about your initiative, um, e-ventures. So, yeah. So actually my previous uh, initiative the e-venture was an investment group that invested in women-owned startups because uh, as uh, all that I told you in the beginning of how successful and amazing and robust the ecosystem here is still suffer from having mostly white 30 something male employees in it and being in a way bringing all of them from the same back most of them from the same background and not really allowing part of the population to take part in it. And this is something that is also, I think, contributing to the resilience of the city, of the fabric of the ecosystem and the city. And this is something that we're working on to include more groups of the city. If it's the women, as you said, if it's what is called now elderly or older people and more uh, to be part of it and not be just tossed aside in that sense. And to have really, and in that sense also Israel is very, very Israeli. The industry here, you don't see like, for example, in the Silicon Valley that you have people from all over the world. It's not that um, diverse. And this is something that we're working very hard on. And it's important. Um, it's from both sides also to bring this diversity and resilience into the ecosystem, but it's also to improve their um, ability, the residents or the population abilities to be part, to take part in this actually great industry and to improve their life. So uh, in that sense, this is part of what I'm trying to do wherever I am. Uh, but it's the city understands that it's part of its uh, role being the government or the local um, government in this sense. As part of the international, and we have also national teams to do it all across this, uh, the country, but specifically for Tel Aviv, with its character and uh, specification, we do it uh, to, to our ecosystem. Brilliant, something that we should talk about in, in, in the future, definitely. And we look forward I would love to, to your office. 
uh, Dragana, how, how would you say about Serbian environment? What are some new target groups that you as, as, as the office team uh, would like to, to work more that need to kind of help you? Yeah, definitely the new stakeholders are young people who do mm -hmm. not hesitate and uh, are making new projects. We certainly uh, try to be there for young people who have projects and do not know how to place them or they need some kind of help for uh, its uh, realization. We offer them support and help in every way. Uh, I think it's very important to encourage young people uh, to, to not uh, give up on their ideas and dream uh, because market is a big. Uh, there is place for everybody under this <laughs> sky. Um, market, is also, market is also powerful and there is a room for everyone. As an office, we will continue to help definitely young people uh, place their projects uh, both locally and globally, as well as connect them with other companies with uh, which they can achieve some kind of cooperation. We had um, a few IT pre-qualifications uh, that we... Uh, Sorry, <laughs> I, am, I didn't turn off notifications. We have like uh, IT retraining programs for young people, uh, people with, uh, who are not, uh, um, uh, who doesn't have job, people who finished some other like um, uh, faculties, um, they were doing something else, pre-qualification for IT sectors. And after that, we um, made them to have practice uh, with uh, global IT companies. And um, I think that definitely we will um, continue with that pro program of pre-qualification for IT sector. Also with, uh, uh, we had uh, one uh, for only women, women. So yeah, definitely, definitely young people is something that will change the future and that generation that definitely. <laughs> Thank you for, for these words of encouragement and also the, the practical things you do, which can guide uh, those who, who will watch this after, after the... Yeah, because they can write can us on social or, media, send us email, we will reply, we can meet, we can chat online, everything. So yeah, we are thank here. You, thank you for doing so much. Um, and it's, it's important to, to, in new circumstances, to actually enable people to, to go into uh, IT sector, especially because we are learning to work regardless where we are in these circumstances. Yes. I would like to hear Franco's view on, on this topic, new stakeholders we notice in Italy uh, that are important for, for your economy and also DBLA is, is an international business. You, you hire people. What kind of profiles you, you work for? University graduates, what qualities that those stakeholders should have? Oh, as you know, I'm still hiring people, even <laughs> and in Belgrade too, in this moment. We have a couple of young people that are, we, have, we hired and we are managing how to get, uh, to get them uh, uh, on board. Uh, and because we, uh, what, what I know is that we need uh, these uh, millennials with and and people uh, we need the police. We, need, we needed that the nerds uh, to, to 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 and we needed their disruptive strength to go ahead with uh, with this the situation, especially now. Oh, I'm very happy to say that uh, I find that in the average, the people that is coming from the university all over Europe, in uh, Belgrade, of course, are uh, good good people are ready to go, ready to be, to be uh, productive immediately. Sometimes, okay, I am, a, I am, I'm a boomer, so I have to say something against the, the, <laughs> the millennials, you know, oh, sometimes they are not less, a little less ready to, uh, to understand how hard is the effort to get, uh, to go to do the new stuff, but usually this is they have a wider they, they are they have a wide consciousness of their role, and when they and uh, I really think that uh, things are doing well, 
and people that we are hiring, the people that I'm meeting are surely the best assurance for the future of our society. This is what I'm convinced to. Thanks a lot. And this kind of brings us to the end of our panel. It was, at least for me, very, very fast and vibrant. Thank you for sharing your contribution. To end it, um, I would like to thank you once again. And maybe to ask you to answer in one sentence of what is one thing that you and your team are working on until summer? Uh, maybe it's something that is your, your priority until summer that you can share with the audience. Um, and as word of encouragement and, and optimism from your city. Michal, you can start. Um, as you said, I believe that we eventually we will take the best out of this situation to the future. This is hopefully, this is the encouragement. And we're trying to actually adapt all of what's happening to the work plan till the end of the year because things are as you said aren't really back to normal yet so hopefully to minimize the impact on the companies and the um, businesses that suffered and help them take this opportunity to leap further uh, and stay optimistic <laughs> that we will prevail in that sense that's full plate. That's a lot of them. <laughs> Thank you. Dragan, what would you add? Uh, maybe, or well, not maybe, definitely finishing uh, the data center in Kragua. That's, we started building it um, last year in July, and we are expecting it to finish it now during the summer. So, yeah, uh, beside the data center and um, quite lots of services, uh, new services for citizens and businesses. <laughs> and also, yeah, yeah, we are working on lots of stuff, but uh, definitely data center that is a huge uh, thing for infrastructure of government and also businesses and uh, startups in Serbia, the development of the e-government services for citizens and businesses. Thank you. That's, that's also a lot. You are all very hard working. Franco is going to say as well something to that. I have nothing to do. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm doing that. No, actually, I'm doing my business as usual. So I'm working on projects and so on. But what I think of it is the most intriguing part of my business in the, in the, next, uh, in the next month is that I'm managing a survey in the institution feeling and the attitude for uh, uh, digital all over the world. So we have a lot of people in the in the BSI in, in the BSI BSI members all over the world, and uh, so we wanted to understand how institutions are thinking differently in different parts of the world about the same stuff. I hope this uh, will be. I hope this uh, survey will be successful, because it could have a very could give us a very good uh, opportunities to share data from uh, different feeling and different uh, how the mind and also the belly of the different the people working in the institution can uh, can think about can think about the digital, digital transformation and what they are scared about or what they would like first. Hope to give you some, uh, some return uh, in a, 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 for fall. Thanks, thanks a lot. And once again, wishing you a wonderful rest of the day and week. Thank you for your contribution. We look forward to keeping in touch with you. Our next webinar will be happening in two weeks on 27th of May. And the topic will be about new models of working. We will be sharing with executives um, excellent perspectives on, on uh, human resources and how how things are changing when it comes to caring about your people and what you can what you can do to to prepare for the new normal. I wish you a lovely evening and thank you. Thank you for inviting.